So my mom is starting to help me pack. She's in her mid 60s, computer adequate at best sometimes I would say, but I love that she's willing to learn and she wants to get involved and help out and make a couple extra bucks. So all she's doing for me is packing and using Inventory Lab and I'm kind of taking it from there, all right? So I made her a video, step by step, how to create a batch or a shipment in Inventory Lab. So naturally, if she could benefit from this, anybody new to the Amazon world could also benefit from this. So mom, I love you, and for everyone else, thanks for being here. This is Duke Does Amazon, my Amazon selling channel. And so that's really it. I'm gonna take you to my computer. We're gonna open up Inventory Lab and go step by step by step how to create a shipment. And then at the end of this, I also will kind of walk you through my settings that my mom doesn't have to worry about. Let's go. Okay, so the first thing you do, inventorylab.com. Now remember, that's the website. If you type this into Google or something, you just can type out the words inventory lab. So once you're logged in, this is where it takes you. If for some reason you get lost or anything, all you have to do is go to the top here on list, hover over that and click list and prep, okay? Now what we're gonna do is click on new batch. And so this will appear every single time, okay? Don't concern yourself with it. We already have settings in place. The only thing you have to do at the top here, batch name, you can leave it as is. It gives you like the date, the time, etc. I like to title them just so I know in case I'm doing multiple. So I did mom one, okay? And then the only other thing you need to worry about is ship from, okay? If I were to click on this, it's gonna show my address or any other address that I've shipped from before. The reason for that is that when we print the shipping labels, Amazon factors in the cost based on where you're shipping from and they also determine which warehouse they go to based on where you're shipping from a lot of times or at least that's one of the factors. So those two things, title it for your own sake and ship from is important, okay? Not the end of the world. And then just by the way, because I'll be sharing this online, um, I have it as individual products, FBA, private workflow. I will label all of my items and I also have it so that the labels print out every time an item is added to a batch. Um, provide box content, that's like weight and size, yes. Uh, do not capture minimum, maximum and shipping method, small parcel delivery. But again, once you do that once, I never touch any of that. Batch name, ship from, great. Okay, so here we are. So we're gonna add our first product. I just earlier randomly uh, copied uh, and, and I'm pasting uh, this coffee, Javalia, right? And so if that matches up, which we wanna be certain at this point, if there was multiple of these items here, you wanna make sure you're comparing apples to apples, but that's why I'm giving you the code so that there's no guessing. You know the exact item that you're gonna be listing, okay? And so for those, um, that's called the ASIN. That's the number that is specific to this item on Amazon. So a two pack, a three pack, a one pack, every single item on Amazon has a specific ASIN. So if this Javalia coffee, for instance, was sold as a two pack or a three pack or a six pack, they would all have different ASINs. So that's why if you can give somebody listing the ASIN, that's one of one, okay? And that's why only one listing showed up when I typed in that ASIN. So now once the product is there, this is what we're gonna see, okay? So let's just focus on the middle of the screen here, this middle section, okay? You don't have to worry about this stuff at all. You don't have to worry about battery and regulated. It's already been preset to no. It's this middle section and only this middle section that you have to worry about, okay? Your quantity, let's just say you're doing six of them. How much did it cost us? Let's say they cost us $4.99. The purchase date, um, here we'll just leave it, February 15th, 2022. The supplier, Walmart. And this is really important, the expiration date. You see this eyeball icon, if it doesn't need an expiration date, meaning it's not a product that expires, like for instance, I don't know, a t-shirt, you can just click on that there, okay? And you can see, I can't click into here, and to enable it, you just click on that again, okay? Uh, a couple things here. The really, really important parts are gonna be the quantity, 
and our cost and the expiration date. The purchase date and the supplier, that's good for our own records because we can run reports on this to see like, where do we buy, where do we have most success with, what suppliers, right? Um, where is this, what date was it purchased from? That's just a records thing. That's not gonna affect your profit and loss. The total quantity, because naturally you need to send in the right amount, uh, the average cost so that we know our profit and loss, an expiration date because that's critical because if you you cannot sell things that are going to not only expire but basically get to Amazon with a, within a hundred days of expiring. So always, always be critical on that and if you're selling a multi-pack, remember you're gonna use the expiration date that's coming up the soonest. Always err on the side of caution, okay? And so also, so let's just say here 12-31-2022, okay? Then down here, don't worry about any of this, okay? So again, you are solely focusing on these five things right here, okay? And then what we're gonna do, once that's ready, I've already given you or gonna tell you what price to list it at, but you're gonna put that in this box right here. Let's just say I tell you $14.99, so you do that. Don't even worry about the other competition. Behind the scenes, I have software that will increase and decrease the price, so trust me, uh, just enter the price that I provide you, okay? And then you don't have to do anything else. It just tells you underneath that our projected profit and our return on investment. And when you're ready, you click add to batch. And here you go. So you can see we have the product here in our batch. Here you can see that there's six that have been added, okay? Now let's say, oh shoot, I just realized there was two more of these under the table. You can click on these icons and click on edit, okay? And so now you're gonna go to total quantity and change that to eight and click on save. If I had my printer plugged in right now, by the way, it would automatically print those extra two that you just added because that's part of our settings. And for YouTube, I will talk about that later on at the end of this, okay? So let's say that's it. Now this would never be it, but let's just say that's it. Okay, nothing else to add. You're going to click on, um, so, so before I even do that, as we've talked about, you're gonna have a box. These are gonna print barcodes out to you as you do this in live time as we've gone over. Either you're going to fill the box or it reached 45 pounds. And for YouTube, 50 is the max, so I err on the side of caution and do 45 in case there's human error. Whichever happens first, okay? I want you to stop at that point in time and then do this. Click on review batch and then click submit and then click sync. Okay, so here is the shipment, okay? It's one shipment, all eight of them are going to the same destination right here, Charlotte number two, okay? If all looks good, um, at this point in time, what I would have you do is just reach out to me, um, but you're gonna click on create, and then yes, create. And so now what we're gonna do is enter box contents, okay? So all of these are in the same box. For your shipping and packing, everything's gonna go in the same box to make life easier, okay? So you just select, this, this button here selects everything. Now this is only one item. Imagine there was 10 items in here. If I click this one, it would select all of them or I can do it individually like that, okay? And then I want you to pay attention to this assign to a box. If these aren't selected, you can't assign them to a box. Once they're selected, you can now assign them to a box. And there's only one box, right? Because that's how we're doing it, one box at a time to make this as simple as possible. And now we're gonna click assign. And then we can click on transmit boxes, okay? Here you would enter your weight, here you would enter your dimensions, okay? And so what you would do, let's just say 18, I'm gonna make this up, 12, 12, 12. Now again, keep in mind, it can't be over 50 pounds and, and no side, do I do more than 24 inches? So that's why we use the boxes we do and that's why I tell you to stop at 45 pounds if you get to that first before filling the box. So once everything's good, you click, uh, click on submit all. 
is you'll get this pop-up message here that says, got it, and you are good to go. Now from here, you have nothing else to do, okay? What's gonna happen is that I am gonna go to my Amazon seller account. I am going to complete this there. I'll download the shipping label and I will send that to you to pack, okay? And so that's really the gist of it. And, um, and, and, and that's really it. So if you have any questions, basically just call me. Um, we're gonna be figuring this out as we go, of course, but I think that is pretty step-by-step -step and just holler at me if you need anything. Love you. Alrighty, so let's talk about settings for a second, okay? So first things first, if you're not familiar, there's two options as far as you can have all of your products sent to one warehouse or you can enter a shipment and then it'll spit out to you how many different warehouses your shipment is going to, okay? That's the one I typically do when I'm doing it myself, but I'm trying to think big picture and make my mom's life as easy as possible, so we're actually going to elect for the one where everything goes to the same warehouse. Now, that means we're gonna be paying 30 plus cents per item in every box. So it might not be the most financially advantageous, although it's not a huge deal in the big scheme of things, it makes life easy because now she has a box next to her. She knows that when it gets to 45 pounds, by the way, the max is 50, so we like to give some room for cushion, or the box is full, that's it. We're gonna close that shipment, put on a label, and it's out the door. Now here is one major tip or trick that I thought about, okay? If you go into Amazon Seller Central and you set it up for the uh, distribution setting where where they can tell you it can go to multiple warehouses and you create your shipment, right? Let's say she gets to 45 pounds or has a full box and she goes to create the shipment, it might be set anyway that it's all gonna go to one place. Maybe they didn't divide it. So we shouldn't prematurely assume anything because now we don't have to pay 30 plus cents per item and it's going to the same warehouse. And if we do that and it says, okay, it's going to two warehouses, what we simply do is decline the shipment, go back, then we go into Amazon, we change our shipping so that it all goes to the same place, maybe give it five minutes, and now resubmit that shipment, and now everything's gonna go to one place, we will pay the 30 plus cents per item, but that's a way of testing it because sometimes that happens instead of automatically assuming that you would get split up into multiple shipments, so that's a really good tip and trick for you. Also, as far as label goes, we don't co-mingle. I wanna make things as simple as possible, we are printing labels for every single item, barcode labels for every single item, and, um, and we're just slapping them on every product. Also, we have a setting in place that if you change your quantity, like we did in the video from like six to eight, an extra two will automatically come out of our Rolo printer that we have connected. And then everything else in Inventory Lab, once you start doing this for a while, it kind of auto-populates. It's really, really intuitive, really, really simple. If you ever make a mistake or an error, almost nothing is unreversible or irreversible, whether it's an inventory lab itself or once you get to Amazon Seller Central. By the way, I don't have my mom going into my Amazon Seller Central account. I'm always neurotic about account, not neurotic, but like just over the top. There's no need for her to do that. When she's done with the shipment, she can let me know. I'll get a barcode printed in Amazon Seller Central or download it, I should say. Send it to her, she prints it, throws it on the label and we're done. And that is the gist of it as far as working with someone else. It's no problem that she logs into my inventory lab account that's not Amazon Seller Central, but to be safe, I have added her as an employee in Amazon Seller Central, just as another form of protection. So I'm Jonathan, Duke does Amazon. I hope this video helps a little bit. And um, yeah, so that's the basics for creating a shipment in Amazon, or excuse me, an inventory lab. See you guys soon. Hey, buddy. Oh, that's a good boy. That's Dookie right there. That's the Duke, man. Yeah, there he is. Good security.